Hey everyone, how you doing today? We are doing a special one-off session with Matt, the mortgage guy, because you know what? The 10 year shocked me this week. It is down. It is actually down a couple of weeks in a row. So I'm going to guess that interest rates are crashing on 30 year mortgages. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just every video has to say crashing these days. So uh, Matt, for, first thing, what's going on with the 30 year mortgage? We can talk about owner ox, you know, normal credit scores, all of that. I'm guessing rates are down, but I don't know. Right. Yeah. And I, and I like to put real numbers on it because people are always like, oh, you guys will talk, you know, yeah. in general, but what does that mean? And if, if, if the bottom of the bottom mid February, before we things saw things go up two and a half, 2.625 was most lenders bottom, not paying any points on a 30 year fixed fairly, you know, perfect scenario as far as credit score and whatnot. Okay. That for a lot of lenders went above three, three and a quarter. And I feel like we've probably got like a quarter percent back and it's hard. Every single lender is different. And as a broker, I get to see it across dozens of lenders. And then you've got your banks and credit unions and direct lenders. And so everybody's different, but I would imagine on most rate sheets, the 30 year fixed for owner occupied folks has, has come down about a quarter. And so, you know, the stuff that I looked at that was 3.1, you know, now I'm like, oh, 2.875. And um, one thing I do want people to understand is that rates change every day. And for whatever reason, Mike, I have this like feeling in my stomach, this little blip down is going to be really short lived. And yeah, sometimes I, just real quick, I have to agree with you. Again, I've been watching the economy for three decades now, 20 years specifically on real estate and rates. And I, and I've said it on my daily financial news, something odd is happening. We got gangbuster retail sales, great unemployment, job openings here and there and everywhere. We got record travel. We got the, this fourth lane of our economy opening up called the service sector or the service industry. And yet rates went down. Right. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it makes about as little sense. And this is a whole nother topic mm. as the latest. Have you seen the $25,000 proposal from the Biden team. Oh, I have not. They're good. Oh my. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to get into it. Um, oh my God. Bar Barry Habib, who both both you and I know, and I think yeah. you respect them as much as I do, um, said that the current administration is trying to put out the fire by throwing gasoline on it. So um, me, me and you align on that for sure, where it's oh. like you don't inject. And, and here's the good news though, Mike, is it's on its surface, sounds like a ridiculously crazy idea. Then you dig in a little bit, you're like, okay, it's super, super restrictive. Mm. And so people will find that out sooner than later. And again, it's it's just an idea and it's something that they actually put pen and paper to and Proposal. actually wrote something out. Proposal, right. Okay. Um, oh my and gosh. I have to look who that knows, up. Yeah. you know, 12, 24, 36 months from now, maybe it'll be um, a, a, a decent idea. And, and the people that it's targeting, uh, it, it would be helpful for, but I don't know if you want to go down that path yet or, or jump into I, I, that You know, we'll, we'll save that one for our, our next Wednesday conversation because I want to be a little more informed. I'm going to go read it first. Okay, for so sure. Yeah, not, it'll be interesting I'm just to not discuss. guessing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so again, I think when we're back to rates, I mean, rates went down unexpectedly. The only thing I could think of, and I, I postulated this on my daily financial news is uh, maybe the Fed has come in and is actually actively executing what, I, what has been called Operation Twist. They've done it twice, once in the 60s, once in the early or mid 2000s. And basically what happens is they become the dominant buyer of the 10 year, right? And when they become the dominant buyer, they can force rates lower because they don't have to get a return. So I don't know if this is happening, but the reality is the 10 year behaved the opposite that it should have. And it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibilities that the Fed wants to keep rates low is buying the 10 year hand over fist. And that would you think, cause rates you think to they lower. would do something like that and then and then just not really tell anybody? Well, they would just... do it and then they would announce it later. They will announce okay. it at a Fed meeting. They will say we've started the execution, we've done 150 billion or whatever it'll be. So they will tell us public stuff, but they can start executing it between meetings and then report on it later. This week has been not even this week. Thursday and Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday have been so odd on the 10 year. I'm like, right. I know I look at it too. And, and it's just like, you know, you got the 25 day moving average and then it just like, it fell off know. a cliff. And that's right. the only thing I can think of is there's been some external force, likely the fed, because they're the only one with enough size 
to interrupt that market. I mean, it was a trend and trends are hard. Trends bounce. They don't fall off a cliff very often. Right. Right. And that's why too, like everything we've seen where it's like future inflation is coming, everything that we, we see in the future is going to cause interest rates to go up. I generally don't try to advise and tell people like I, you should lock or you should float. I just, I kind of give them the information, let them decide right now more than ever. And I, and I talked to my team about this this morning. If you like it, lock it. I just don't trust that what we see right now and this, and this little dip in rates will last. I would not be surprised if we give this whole quarter back next week or the week after. And then people inevitably be like, what happened? I thought we were back in the twos. I just, you know, by the time any other news outlet starts talking about this, yeah. we'll be, we, you know, we'll have already given it up. Yeah. Well, the other thing I want to flip the script script on is something I call, I'll call buyer sentiment. And I'm seeing something I saw in 06 and it's actually the tail of the end of the run up. And what I'm seeing now is obviously we've joked about, you know, 20 offers on houses and, and all of these things. And more and more people have written four, five, six, seven offers and gotten nothing. They've gotten outbid. And what consumer psychology tells me in that situation is many of them will just give up. So what does that mean in an environment of rising rates and rising prices? That means because it's hard today, they are going to choose to sit on their hands, wait until it's easier and pay more both in price and in payment and in interest rate. It doesn't make logical sense mathematically, but consumer psychology tells me this is happening. It's happened before and it will happen again. And yes, I know it's hard, but do you want to pay more or do you want it to be easy? It, it seems like an odd trade-off. Right. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've, I've studied human psychology and buyer sentiment that more in this last six months than ever before. And I'm, it's cool because I have interesting conversations with real estate agents. Mm -hmm. I feel like the agents I talk to and the interaction that I have with clients, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's market research and I get to see directly into, I mean, on the phone with these folks. And when, when you're competing in a market like this, the first thing that happens is you maybe have heard about it or your lender or your realtor tells you about it. Hey, listen, Mike, it's, it's difficult out there as you may or may have not heard, you know, it's going to take offering above asking. You might have to remove some contingencies. If it's listed for 379, I can tell you from talking to the other side, it might go for 430 or 440. You tell somebody that it goes in one ear and out the other. Then they offer 400 on that first house. And then they get the news not only did we not get it, but to be completely honest, we weren't even close. Mm. So then the next house, they're like, well, I don't want to pay 50 or 60,000 above ask. So they offer 415 on something with a similar, you know, 379 listing price. Then they miss, miss out again. And then it takes, it literally, I, I see it with so many people. It takes a couple times where they go, oh, maybe the stuff that they were talking about, like mm. these people that are doing this every day might know what they're talking about. And so then they get a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more, okay, yeah, I really want to buy a house. And if the aggressive offers don't work, then it turns into frustration and it turns into, I don't want to do this anymore. And, and like you said, if, if, if you're well advised and you come out of the gate and I've, I've seen the best advice I've seen from real estate agents is there's no put in a good offer, get a counter, Let's, let's see how we work this out. It's like, if you want the house, come with your strongest offer that, you know, if, if you're willing to pay 440 and, and you were willing to offer at one price and get a counter and maybe consider it, just put that offer in up front. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, unfortunately, that, that I've been working with for six or nine months, they would have bought the house they love today for $50,000 less had they put in that really strong offer in August time. or September. Yeah. And right or wrong, I'm not telling people what to do with their money or, or what to do with their home purchase. It is what it is. And that's the state of the market. And a lot of them are, forget it, I'm going to throw in the towel. What I see with price appreciation and what I see with interest rates is not only is it going to be worse off for you in the future price-wise, but then when you pay a higher interest rate as well, it's it's a double whammy. Right. And, and, and unfortunately, I think a lot of them, like you said, will say, I can't wait until I'm only competing against two or three offers. 
but you'd rather be in that scenario, but pay, you know, 480 or compete with a lot of people and, and, and get it in contract at 440. Uh, again, it's up to each individual consumer and every market's different. Every, every house is different. It's just, uh, don't, um, I guess think through it is probably my best advice before you just decide, you know, this is hard. Yeah. No more trying because yeah. generally if something's hard, you're on the right track. Yeah, exactly. I guess. Yeah. Truer words. Right. So I would, what I would tell people is, is just respect the process. You're going through a process. Don't give up because if you want to be a homeowner and, and homeownership is good, getting on the property ladders is, is a chance for wealth and all of those things. It is a good thing. It's hard today. I do think it gets easier in the future, but easier doesn't make easier is not a better deal. Easier could mean more a bigger price. It could mean giving up on equity because if you buy here and it goes up 10%, do you want that 40 grand or do you want to give that to someone else? And of course, remember, most of you are signing up for a 30 year payment. So do you want that payment to be an extra $117 every month for 360 months? Or do you want it to, to work while it's hard? So do the work, keep at it. It will get better. Don't give up is my advice. I think I think that's true, and uh, I tried to I tried to pull up just on this whole uh, topic of of rates. Everybody always wants to know, like, oh my gosh, rates are down, so so demand is up. We won't see that. Though that data won't come out until yeah, weeks. well in the future. But as rates went up, I can tell you that you know mortgage applications. I think it was the ninth last week. The data that we got early this week, it was like six weeks in a row of decline in in mortgage applications. But again data is is one piece of it and then when you dig into it you can realize okay well in my opinion and this is something i just thought about this morning mike there's less mortgage applications but a ton of people that i see that are buying people are sitting in this pre-approved shopping stage for longer yeah, right for longer yes so so we've got just as many very likely more buyers in this yep. pool less mortgage applications because they've are, they're already in the pool. Yeah. They've already been pre-approved and they're waiting. You don't get in twice. Yep. Right. Right. And so, and so that might be part of that. J just like they manipulate the data where they say, you know, home sales are down. Well, no shit. Like there's less homes for sale. So of course the number of sales is down. Ah. If there's a fourth of the inventory, yeah. you're not going to have the same number of sales. It doesn't yeah. make it any less competitive or, or any less hot of a market, but yeah. um Yeah too funny. Data data is fun. Yeah, you can make data fun. say whatever you want. A, a, very true. Very true. Statistics lie. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Matt, thank you very much for coming on. I figured rates were down a quarter point. I like you think it could be a blip. Uh, we will see why, but also buyer psychology. That was fun to run through. How can people follow you? Uh, please come check out the YouTube channel. I've been, I've been um, all of a sudden before I know it ramped up to five videos a week or something and having fun with it, um, getting feedback from people. So Matt, the mortgage guy on YouTube, if you've got specific questions, uh, you want to fire them over to Matt, M-A-T-T -T, at MattTheMortgageGuy.com. Um, I'm answering all types of stuff. I had a gal call me yesterday and, you know, I'm in, she was in Oregon and she says, well, I don't want you to just waste your time giving me advice. Like what does it cost for a consult? And I said, please Come just, on. Ask Happy to help you. The The three minutes we talked about it, you know, I could have already had her <laughs> question answered. And so, awesome. um, you know, she sent me a couple of mortgage quotes she was looking at and it, it, it's obviously unbiased advice because I can't even lend in Oregon. So it's just like, there you go. this one looks better than that one. There you go. Well, folks, do yourself a favor. If you're in California, you need to have a mortgage broker on your team. Reach out to Matt, the mortgage guy, Matt at Matt, the mortgage guy.com. Let him know you came from one rental at a time and he will take extra good care of you. Thanks buddy. All right. Thanks, Mike. Talk yep. to you next week. You got it.